Good afternoon. Sorry about the delay in getting started. Earlier this afternoon, Jesse Proudman and Shamil spoke of the use cases for OpenStack. Use cases around the world, use cases that are cutting edge with IoT and more traditional with web services technology. With OpenStack over the last five years, we have built multiple products and today we are going to talk about a series of cloud offerings that we have built on OpenStack. They're, this also meet a variety of use cases, and then I'll have my team come up and talk about the individual cloud offerings. The, uh, the first thing let's get started with is our own open cloud strategy. Those of you who attended the keynote heard Angel and Jesse talk about how open is important to IBM. Open source in general, but open stack in particular. And it isn't just about bringing IT technologies. It's about enabling automation. It's a about saving money. It's about providing on-demand capability. It's basically about accelerating innovation. Now, innovation comes in various forms, but the part that we focus on is the digital transformation to enable you, our customers, to achieve more with your technology investments, to achieve more with your technology integrations, to achieve more by having us provide more of the capabilities in a standard format, which allows you to focus on your business solutions. That's the focus of our uh, OpenStack strategy. Now, OpenStack itself has had phenomenal growth. You saw that today, you saw that yesterday in all the presentations. And by the sheer number of participants in not just the summit, but of course the entire community. And we were here at the beginning five years ago. And at that time, um, the number of um, participants could, the number of uh, companies participating could be counted on with hands. But now, 550. Now, through this time, we have been uh, contributing. Uh, with reviewers, we have been contributing with uh, board members, we have been contributing with core contributors, and the numbers speak to the significance IBM puts on ensuring that we are a major contributor to the community. But as Jesse said this morning, you can't out and await the world, and the world has to participate in the community. And I am gratified that even though we as IBM are number three in uh, number five in terms of the reviewers we have three of the top ten contributors we are not we are not at OpenStack which is and primarily an IBM community not at all a lot of you are contributing a lot of the people who compete in IT technology space are contributing that truly ensures that we have a community that is off the planet, and we can, in fact, participate together to innovate. Let me see if this works. Now, one of the biggest changes that has occurred in OpenStack in the last 18 months is the use of OpenStack in production. For those of you who have attended the summit in the past, you would recall that there were significant discussion about the level of effort it goes to install it. There's significant discussion about how is your testing going. But now the discussions we hear are about how is your production use? How is your availability been? How has been your ability to accept the innovations coming out from the community? 60% in a survey. 60% said that they have plans in place or they have already executed upon them to put it in production. Many of the big company names that Shamil and Jesse spoke of earlier this afternoon already do have them in production. And of the Fortune 100 companies, 11 of them have production implementations of OpenStack. Point being, OpenStack has arrived. OpenStack has arrived as a solution, as a, distribu as a distribution. But what's more important for us is that OpenStack has arrived as, standard, as a basis of standardized solutions. And it is the standardized solutions, the use cases of the standardized solutions that we'll explore. Now, 
one big aspect of uh, Jesse's and Angel's keynote speech was about OpenStack going global. Our customer base using our OpenStack solutions is in fact quite global. In Australia, Walt Systems, their entire business is predicated on secure multi-tenancy solutions. They are utilizing our OpenStack supported next scale systems to build out their offering. Over in Germany, the um, technology reseller has solutions utilizing on premises, on their own hardware, as well as on soft layer bare metal servers. And they run OpenStack across them, and they access OpenStack using the APIs, their code being completely portable, regardless of whether they're targeting the uh, off-premises or the on-premises solution. While over in the US, a service provider provides on-demand access to compute capacity that's utilizing OpenStack. This is enabling them one um, tier of differentiation in that they aren't just customers. They are customers who have customers of their own enabled with OpenStack that shows a level of reliability for these companies to essentially bank their business on OpenStack because the entire offering is OpenStack based. Their entire business is OpenStack based. But speaking of banks in China, a banking customer utilizing OpenStack to manage their applications on power systems. It's not just about x86. There are OpenStack support for power, OpenStack support for mainframes, allowing you to get VMs as a service, regardless of whether they're x86, power, or on Z systems. Now, these offerings, these capabilities are made available through the use of OpenStack in standard formats for public, dedicated, and local. Through all those, we have a, a single theme running across. The single theme focuses on delivering four value propositions for all of our customers on all of our platforms. The first, the very aspect that we have these multiple platforms is for you to have choice. But choice is not very useful if it's not consistent from an API perspective, from a user experience perspective, or from a capability perspective. You wish to have the choice because your workloads require very specific uh, aspects in terms of location, scalability, latency, security. It is on that basis that you wish to choose. But when you make the choice, you don't want to be forced to operate differently. And choice with consistency ensures that your experience and the experience of your users and the capabilities that we provide are the same regardless of the deployment model chosen. Now this deployment model allows you to build applications that potentially have components on different deployment models. Part of it is on the public cloud, part of it might be on premises on a private cloud. That starts building out hybrid applications. Now hybrid applications may have been a bear to create and maintain two years ago. But with the industrialized hybrid cloud that IBM now offers, that underpins everything that we have launched in the last one year, that industrialization of the capability provides a level of security, stability, SLAs for you to go production with hybrid applications. Now all these new applications that are being developed are being developed in a slightly different way than in the past. Yourselves, your competitors, our other customers, they're taking a DevOps approach to developing these applications. The tooling that we have put in place enables that approach. The productivity of your developers is the primary focus. So everything that we are releasing this past year and moving on to the future maintains that focus on ensuring we deliver higher productivity for your DevOps operations. That higher productivity for development obviously means getting it done quicker. But from an ops perspective, 
It means SLAs. It means less effort to do the run and maintain. And last and certainly not the least is making the data, the telemetry in place, making it more accessible by the average developer and the average user. We are fond of saying that the amount of data and the amount of problems that exist in our industries is more than any number of data scientists you could hire. Well, you don't have to hire the data scientists to do this because every IBM Cloud product focused on providing the analytics in an accessible manner that are easy to determine actionable outcomes from. So I, talk, I spoke of the, the three different deployment models, public, dedicated off-premises, and on-premises, by which, of course, I mean your choice of data center. It doesn't have to be your office. It's just a data center that you choose. Sometimes that could even be an IBM data center. The focus on these three models and having the same thing is to ensure that when you go public, you're able to use an infrastructure that's designed for hyperscale, which means that, number one, you can get it on demand. Number two, you can grow it on demand without any commitment, any investment. But many a times, it's simply not enough. It is simply not enough to have um, the segregation that virtualization allows. You are required to end up with some level of stronger segregation for compliance and security. For that, we provide off-premises dedicated. And sometimes off-premises is not good enough. You actually need it on the premises you choose. Those two on the right are our two private cloud implementations. Blue Box Cloud, 90 days from when Blue Box became part of IBM, Blue Box Cloud was available on every one of the 30 plus software data centers in 90 days. That shows the level of industrialization that already existed in the Blue Box offering and showed the capability of bare metal servers and software that already existed. And that marriage has, put, has brought an offering that we are finding incredible success with because private hosted cloud, private hosted cloud gives, the, gives you all of the security you desire and the agility to be able to get new resources on demand. Local is what we announced this week, this week at OpenStack, we announced Blue Box Local, the ability for you to get the same cloud I described on your premises. And I'd like Hernan to please come up and talk about this. Now, Hernan, you may have seen earlier today, he was our very own chief ramen noodle officer. <laughs> but his day job is our chief product officer. So, Hernan, thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you very much. Uh, and good afternoon. My name is Hernan Alvarez. I'm Chief Product Officer. And yes, that was uh, me in a ramen outfit running around like a lunatic on stage. Um, I was coaxed into that early this morning, I'm sure, after, uh, after much, uh, much cajoling late last night. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Blue Box and uh, what we are and the value we, we offer and why we chose to um, integrate with IBM. Um, we, we were a private company for about 10 years, 11 years, started in Seattle by Jesse Proudman, who you probably saw earlier, um, really grew up as a managed hosting company. And what that means is that we are running mission critical applications for customers since really day one of the company's existence. And then a couple of years ago, with the obvious uh, growth of OpenStack and, and, and uh, importance of private cloud, we pivoted the company to become a private cloud company. But we saw it a little bit different than how other people saw it. We saw private cloud being very complicated and difficult to uh, deploy for really all customers, customers of all sizes, uh, of all budgets. And so what we did is we changed it and turned it on its head and said, let's make private cloud as a service. And so we built a product based on OpenStack, leveraging our years of experience inside of data center operations, network operations, customer support, uh, and deployed that uh, as a service to the customer so they could come to us and buy capacity of a base cloud. We would do all the maintenance, uh, the deployment, uh, the ongoing upgrades, the monitoring of that service. And that changed how people were able to consume OpenStack. So we've had that product in market for a little bit more, about a year and a half. We integrated with IBM. We were acquired by IBM in June this year. 
we took that product that was running in our data centers, uh, in four blue box data centers around the world, and we pivoted. We said, look what we have with IBM. We have software out there with 27 to 30 data centers around the world. Uh, let's move it on to, let's move it on to, uh, into software. 90 days later, we had that. And I'm going to let Asmir talk a little bit more about that dedicated product. He's going to come up here in a couple minutes. So we have years of experience with with operating clouds. We, we did it in our own data centers, now we do it in software data centers. Let's take that knowledge, let's take that product uh, and, and, and take it to the next level and deploy that inside a customer's four walls. And those four walls could be their own data center, it could be a colo of their, their choosing, it could also be an IBM data center, as Sunil said. And so leveraging that, we deployed this week, or announced the GA this week of Blue Box Local. So we take the exact same product that we deliver in, in the dedicated environment and deploy that in a local environment. So that user experience is, is consistent. So as Sunil talked about the entire service catalog going up, uh, going the entire service catalog being available across, I'm getting a, a note from the translator saying slow down. <laughs> I'm notoriously fast talker anyways. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, so we took, that, we took that expertise and we deployed it in a local. Now being able to leverage it and taking that exact same product. So whether you're consuming it in, in a software data center, in a public context, or a dedicated context, or a local context, you're getting the same service and support. And ultimately, you're getting a, pu you're getting a private cloud experience, or public cloud experience with private cloud benefits. So you might need security, um, compliance, uh, latency, um, access to existing IT infrastructure. Uh, there's, there's, a, s there's centuries of data out there, essentially. Uh, Bl IBM is a 109-year-old company. Is that right, Sunil? 109? So IBM's been around for a long time. We have business knowledge that's in, inside of the, the organization that we want to capture. Um, and every business has this. Whether your company is 10 years old or 100 years old, you need to be able to express that business knowledge and that business value through these cloud solutions. And so having a solution that's, that gives you the flexibility, the scalability, and the reliability of, of, a pub, of, a, of a public cloud, but in that private context and access to that local infrastructure and, the, and the, you know, legacy or existing IT infrastructure is really important. And we're seeing a, a great demand from our customers with that. So we talked a little bit about about who we were, so I'm going to move past the slide. Uh, and we talked about the fact that now we can reach out to all the data centers, all the software data centers, and now your data center. So we can take that exact same product, we can deploy it in a software or in your, in your data center you're choosing. And what we see is that customers are looking for a turnkey solution, right? That, that uh, has predictable performance and also has security. They need to understand where the data lives. They need to understand uh, how it's being accessed, who is accessing it. Uh, they also need a, an OpenStack environment that's, that's consistently moving. OpenStack is fast moving. Every six months, there's a new release, as we all know. Uh, if, if you just deploy a, a regular distribution, put it in place, and you build a complex infrastructure, there's a high likelihood that that infrastructure uh, is going gonna, is gonna to bit rot right where it is. And so what we say is that our, our OpenStack, delivered as a service, allows the customers to be able to benefit from the very latest innovations that are happening in the OpenStack environment, whether that's SDN or F NFV or um, other type of analytics with Watson, uh, integrating power systems, uh, or other type of applications, Bluemix. And then we also know that customers need it in high availability. And that's actually a very difficult, very difficult challenge to solve. So Blue Box has spent its years of operational uh, experience to, to design an OpenStack solution um, that meets those, those high availability requirements. And then ultimately, customers are looking for a partner, a good partner that, that's been around, that has an established roadmap, uh, an established track, track record of helping customers su succeed. And IBM is that. So one of the main reasons why we're so excited to be able to participate with IBM. And so I, want to, I want to take a minute to hand this back over to Sunil and thank everybody for, for your time today. Uh, I'm available to talk more about local after this. Uh, and I think Sunil might have a chance for some Q&A afterwards. That's great. Thank you, Hernan. Private cloud as a service where you want it. 
truly uh, innovation, and I'm so happy to have Blue Box delivered this week. Now, getting back to what we launched last month, since we do things that frequently, <laughs> uh, I'd like Azmir to come up and speak to you about Blue Box dedicated and how it's available in all of our so soft play data centers now. Thank you, Azmir. Thanks, Sunil. All right. So. I'd like to start with, with a customer story and then move back to the, to the product. So uh, BioIQ is a, is a company that uh, was a, a Blue Box um, customer before the acquisition, but it really does illustrate the type of customer and the type of benefit that you get from using a, a hosted private cloud. Um, really, it allows you to focus on the innovation at the application layer and really not worry about the infrastructure, right? We, we found that what really drives the business of our customers really is what drives their business. And a lot of times, like, like BioIQ, they're in the, in the medical field. And so uh, being able to uh, drive their innovation uh, on an environment that is very elastic, um, high, highly available, and distributed was really important to them. And they really wanted, uh, they wanted an open technology. So op OpenStack was really something that was key to them. Um, and then, and then really they didn't want to figure out all the different permutations of OpenStack. So a lot of those things really drive them towards choosing an option where they, can, they, 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 they allow the experts, in this case is Blue Box, to deal with the infrastructure in OpenStack, while they, the experts of their, their own um, applications, can really drive innovation much faster. So there's six things that I really think are critical uh, in terms of defining what is, uh, what is key about um, Blue Box Dedicated. I'm going to start um, uh, with performance, and I'm going to work my way counterclockwise to the rest. So uh, performance is key. So every single customer has their own infrastructure. So there's no need for you to share and have a noisy or nosy neighbor. So you can always, uh, you can pretty much guarantee the performance you're going to get from each private cloud that we build, and that's huge. And with, with the power that we get from SoftLayer, the options that we have around, uh, around hardware multiplies considerably. So that's really a, a, key, a key value that, that we see. So whether you're running a, a web scale uh, application that you're running your own, or you're trying to move over a legacy application, uh, uh, the infrastructure that we build is, is compatible with that. The second thing is global availability. So we talked about the, the 20 plus, 30 plus data centers. Let's talk about the data centers in the Asia Pacific area. So SoftLayer has a data center in Tokyo, Hong Kong, Singapore, Chennai, and, uh, and, then of and, uh, and, and, and all of those are connected using a global high speed network, which means that you can send, you can replicate data anywhere in the world for free. So that's the power of having all these different data centers, you can build new use cases that is, is impossible if you were to build uh, an, an, an OpenStack cloud by yourself. And so by leveraging the power that we have with SoftLayer, we can really drive a, a significant more innovation uh, in OpenStack and of course in the layers above OpenStack. And uh, we also feel it's very cost effective. Uh, we charge on a monthly basis for our, for our service. And so a lot of customers, that's really a, a new model for them. They no longer have to worry about the cost of hardware. It gets amortized as, as operating expense. More important thing is that the OpenStack experts, we find that is very is, is a few and far between, uh, that's something they don't have to worry about. So that, that, gets, that gets there. Our OpenStack is stock. We don't modify OpenStack. We make it 100% compatible with any single version of OpenStack you have out there. And then finally, around uh, private and elastic, we can definitely provide that privacy because every uh, piece of um, uh, hardware is dedicated to a customer. And then we can grow and shrink the cloud whenever you want. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass this on to um, Yohari to talk about the uh, public implementation um, that we have um, uh, in, in, uh, in with Bluemix. Thank you. So why public cloud? Because it's a cost-effective and reliable way of delivering value. Organizations, both big and small, across geographies and across virtually every industry. So our OpenStack public cloud allows for rapid cloud instantiation with virtual resources. We have elastic resources for workloads such as application development, analytics, and social applications. We deliver cloud economics by leveraging the shared pay-as-you-go 
public infrastructure. Like Dedicated that you saw before, IBM manages the OpenStack infrastructure, the network gateways, compute and storage hardware, and hypervisors to an SLA of 99.95%. Also like Dedicated, IBM Software Defined Networking provides agility for existing and future cloud networking requirements. So this is our IBM's open standards cloud-based platform as a service, known as Bluemix. We use this for building, running, and managing applications of all types, like web, mobile, and big data. With Bluemix, developers can choose among various services and tools in order to build engaging solutions. As you can see, we have a very large ecosystem. Our clients include banks, manufacturers, across various industries and retail. With both banking and retail, for instance, we find clients that are deploying their web applications in the public cloud and then reaching down into their local data center where they have their databases or other um, storage needs. So I want to point you to the two new betas that we have on OpenStack. IBM Virtual Machines and Object Store. So if you'll go visit us in our PED, you'll see how we have our newest um, OpenStack-based services that work really fast. I'm really proud to say the virtual machines spin up in less than a minute. And we can reach down into the Object Store and connect the two together. So with that, I'll pass it back to Sunil. Thank you, Yohari. Now you all got to hear from three of our offering leads, three different versions of cloud for three specific use cases, all running on OpenStack, all RefStack compliant, offering you interoperability, completely productized, completely industrialized as a service. The, um, the value that OpenStack's maturity and going to production use as fast as it is removes one of the biggest barriers that we used to have in OpenStack. The second barrier was skills. Receiving these services from us as a service removes that barrier. All of you contribute to OpenStack, IBM contributes to OpenStack, and it allows us to ensure that we are always learning about the real world use cases around which we are building these offerings. By having all three, we are underscoring our commitment to OpenStack, to Open, and to hybrid deployments. All of us are here for the next few minutes to take any questions that you have, and we look forward to seeing you through the rest of the day. Thank you very much for coming.